Bible? Who's going to follow in the Bible? Does anyone follow on a phone Bible or anything like that? Anyone follow in the Word? It's great if you can get the Bible. Uh, it's so good to be in the Word, isn't it? Um, and we're going to go to the book of Acts. So, who's familiar with the book of Acts? Anyone? Some? <laughs> That's good. Okay, so maybe help your neighbour if they're not sure where that is. Uh, find the book of Acts in the church Bible, or if you've got it on your phone, pull it up. Page 906. Um, and what we're going to do, I'm going to read some verses from chapter 1 and chapter 2 of Acts. I'm reading New King James, uh, but it'll make sense when you hear it, for sure. Um, slightly long reading, uh, but it's only because I'm kind of in and out of verses uh, when I'm speaking. Okay, So we can build up a bit of a picture in the story, yeah? Make sense? Yeah? Oh, so by the way, I, I don't know if you do this here, but I love interaction. I don't know if that's a possibility. You can smile, you can, uh, this lady's shaking her head, but that's interaction. You can heckle, you can shout, you can say, oh, I don't agree with that. I'm all good with that. You say, get off, I'm not listening to you. That's fine, okay? But if you, know, you want to engage with me, that's absolutely fine. I love that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. There we go. Sorry, sound man. Or sound lady. <laughs> um, okay, so let's read, let's read some scripture, and then we'll get into where we need to go. Um, so let's, let's start chapter 1. We're going to go down from 1 to 8 in chapter 1. Then we'll jump into chapter 2 of Acts. So it says, The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering, by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And it says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptised with water, but you shall be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It's not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Okay, so we're going to jump into chapter 2. From verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. They were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Uh, Parthians and Medes, Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said they are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. 
But these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapour of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Last verse. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst as you yourselves also know. That's good? Mm-hmm. Good so far. Excellent. So, that's a great reading. <clears throat> and uh, the book of Acts is amazing. So let's have a think. Hello? Where are my notes gone? <laughs> Hold on. Just got to rediscover my notes. <laughs> Oh, the notes are gone. That's interesting. Yeah, the notes are gone. I don't know where they've gone. Sue, I'm going to hand this to you. See if you can find them. I don't know where they've gone. We're just going to go from the word itself. Okay, so the book of Acts is quite amazing, isn't it? And I don't know if you've ever thought about this. When you give it a bit of thought... You've got all these nations. I've got, actually, I've got a map in the back of my other study Bible, and it shows Jerusalem in the centre, and it shows where all these nations, all these people are coming from, all around the region, right into Jerusalem. All these nations and peoples are gathered in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. So just imagine, let's think, let's, let's place it, Hounslow, yeah? Nations of the world in Hounslow? We used to live in Hounslow, so we know there's quite a few nations in Hounslow. Uh, imagine being in the centre of Hounslow. There you are gathered. They have all the nations that are gathered, all the different languages and cultures that are gathered. Just think about this, because this is not airy fairy. This is physical, isn't it? This is a physical thing. Peoples that are gathered together in the nation uh, in Jerusalem. When this happens, when that which Jesus has spoken about. That which Jesus has promised and said to the disciples to gather and wait for comes. Holy Spirit comes. Yeah? The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Boom. Bang. <laughs> it's quite an affair, isn't it? And you've got, do you find them? Oh, praise God. Oh, thank you. Sometimes you don't need notes, but sometimes you just need something to give you a bit of a guide. Okay, so we've got the Jews, we've got all these that are hanging around in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. This multitude's coming to come. And then they hear, just think about this, you're in the middle of Hounslow. Is the treaty centre still there? Yeah. Yeah, you're all around near the treaty centre and you hear a sound like a wind. Like a, I don't know. It, in a lot of the translations it says it's like a violent wind. That's slightly scary, isn't it? You'd, if anyone's ever been in a situation of violent wind, you think that's going to take you out, okay? It's a physical thing. So though the Holy Spirit is a spiritual being and person, when he comes into the physicality of Jerusalem, and I've not been to Jerusalem, I dare say Alan has and some of you might be, it's a, it's a reasonable sized city. It's a good time. Very, very dense. Okay. So you could imagine being there with a wind coming in, something that sounds like a wind. Whoosh. Yeah? Just think about it. The physicality of what happens when the Holy Spirit comes into this situation. It's so difficult to describe, but this is what we're talking about. It's an incoming, like a breaking in of the Holy Spirit from God, because Jesus has said, wait, wait, wait for this to come. Wait for this to happen. And it's the effect it has upon the people 
that are just there. It's a physical effect. I'd imagine it would have been a bit maybe scary, I don't know. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. It says, you know, the Spirit came with such power and force, it captures the attention of the masses that are gathered there. So in some respects, the whole city, the whole, imagine this, it's kind of rocked, it's shaken, isn't it, by what's going on. This is, this is what scripture is showing us, I'm, I'm not making this up, this is what we see, isn't it? And the reactions that came out in the reading reveal how people are feeling about what on earth is going on here. What's happened? What's happened in my city? What's going on? We're just here to do this kind of religious thing, <laughs> boom, something else has come <laughs> kind of, you know, a side bender to take out the whole situation. Their reactions, like, they're conf it says they're confused. Some are amazed. Some are totally perplexed. Some are just mocking. Hey, these guys are drunk. What's going on here? Because what they're hearing is they're hearing their language from people they know who are not educated to be able to speak those languages. They know that about the disciples or the apostles, and yet they're speaking their languages. Do you see what I mean? Just, you just have to kind of logically think about it. It's, it's mind-blowing, isn't it? What's going on? So we're trying to get into the under the skin of this. And some think they're drunk, they're going on the, the wino and all that. But of course, as Peter says, it's like early in the morning, that's not the case. But what does happen is, all these people that have gathered from all around the known world into Jerusalem are hearing about the greatness of God. So what we see at the very birth, because Acts is about the birth of the church, the early church being birthed, we see right at the beginning, God being glorified. The mighty wonders and acts of God are being told to the nations of the world. Now, I'm assuming that these people that gathered in Jerusalem are going to go back somewhere. They're going back to their culture, to their nation. They're going to take that encounter that they've had. They're just going to carry it somewhere, aren't they? And maybe going to tell their family or their friends or whoever in their nation, hey, this is what happened when we were in Jerusalem. We weren't expecting that. Do you see what I mean? They come to Jerusalem all the time, but we weren't expecting. They're blown away. But the church is birthed. And in that birthing process, at the beginning, we have... The praise and the worship and the glory to God is going on at the very outset. The birth is, the church is birthed in worship and praise. Hey, you guys have got some great worship going on here. I love that. Thank you, guys. And girls, wherever. Who there are some girls. Thank you so much. It was so good. Worship is so important. Worship opens the way for the Spirit of God to work in people's lives and situations. And listen, not only does it happen in the church, but it happens in us. I was thinking about this. You know, when you, when you read the book of Acts, when you read scripture, I'm sure you find it as well. You know, every time you come to even familiar passages you've read hundreds of times, it's amazing how the Holy Spirit just reveals new things to you. And certainly, this really caught me, this whole thing about them hearing in their own language the mighty wonders of God through these people who didn't even know that language. It is totally miraculous. And um, it's almost like a mark of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon a church or an individual in this kind of visitation, it's like a visitation of the Holy Spirit, or a flow or a breath or a movement of the Holy Spirit. A mark is a deepened participation in worship and praise. It happens in individuals. It can happen in you, it can happen in me. We just start to love Jesus more. We just want to be where he is. We just want to praise him. We want to give him everything. It kind of moves away from just perhaps the norm or the rote or the familiar. We're ignited inside. And it can happen to a whole church congregation or Christian community. So that's what we do see. Okay, let's get into it a little bit more. Um, there's a word in just chapter 1, verse 1. It says this. I'm sorry, I do move around. Sorry about that. 
Uh, in verse 1 it says, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. So this word began is quite key. It intimates that Acts records the dynamic teaching and ministry of Jesus that the church is to continue to do. Also revealing the transfer of Christ's authority and mission to his disciples. So here's the good news, believers. Yeah, all believers? Yeah. Believers in the house? Jesus' mission is our mission. And this is what Acts has shown us, the birth of the church. It's like picking up. You imagine Jesus has got a, um, sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to stay still. Jesus has got a baton, you know, like a relay baton. And he passes it on. And he says like to all of us, hey, grab this. Here's the mandate, here's the mission, it's yours. That's what's going on. He's passing it on to his believers, his disciples, his apostles. His mission is now our mission. And he's empowering us to be those people, to do his mission. He's releasing us into it. And he's giving us the authority to take his gospel, to release his kingdom into our community or wherever he takes us or wherever we are, our families, our friends, our colleagues, wherever that is. That's what's kind of happening. <clears throat> so Luke is showing us this link between the Gospels and the book of Acts. All that Jesus began is now to continue in us and his believers. But the thing is, we have to be empowered to do it because we can't do it without that empowering of the Holy Spirit. We simply can't do it. Yeah, we can do some amazing things. And we can do some great things and good things. But to fulfill his mission, we cannot do it without his empowering. And Jesus talks about this. You can read about it in John's Gospel. He said to him, hey, you guys, you're going to need the Holy Spirit. I'm going, he's coming. This is necessary, really necessary. And so we get to like verse 4. And they're assembled together. And he's commanded them to wait. He's kind of got them all together. They're in Jerusalem. He commands them to wait for the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. And it's kind of all there laid out uh, in stages. And they were like 120 in a room. Uh, some say it's an upper room. It was men. I think there were probably women. They may well have been children in there as well. Sometimes when scripture gives a number, it doesn't give a full number, it gives you a number, but there's probably more involved. Um, but there they are. And they're in obedience, waiting. Because Jesus said, he's commanded them, and he said, wait, 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 wait. So they're in obedience, that's the first thing you see, because they're waiting. And they're probably praying. And I wonder if they're digging around in scripture to try and make sense of what they're waiting for. Now their scripture will be just Old Testament scripture. Obviously there's no gospels, they don't have that. They do have the words of Jesus though, because they've been hanging around him, so they can grab hold of them and think, what are we waiting for? What is this Holy Spirit? What is this about? I think they're kind of aligning themselves. They're making some adjustment. You know, they were asking Jesus about this kingdom, this earthly kingdom. He's talking about something else. So they've got to get their heads right and they've got to get into alignment with what he's saying and make an adjustment in themselves. You see that in their thinking. So they're kind of on it for when what they're waiting for happens. Yeah? So they're making an adjustment and they're ready to receive, though I suspect they have no idea what's about to hit. <laughs> as we've kind of already explored. And it's, it's not just the power, it's the person of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, who's coming, from whom come the gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit. They come from the person of the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus knows they cannot carry the weight of his mission, they, cannot have, they don't have the authority for that mission unless this happens. And so that is the same, each one of us, and every church in the UK, and in Hounslow, and in the land. It is the truth. Because scripture has it. 
We can challenge it ourselves. They could not, and Jesus knows that. And we need him, and we need that infinite. Okay. <clears throat> the other thing that really that sticks out to me here is um, Jesus says this, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Okay, so let's think on you. Yeah, just hold that thought. And you shall be my witnesses, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. It's like Jesus' prophetic vision here. It's local, it's national, it's cross-cultural, it's international, and it's advancing. The gospel advances. His kingdom advances. We might not think it sometimes when we hear stuff in the press or in the world, we might think, goodness. But I tell you, his kingdom is advancing, and it is advancing in our nation and all across the world. And this is our calling to receive his power so that we can join in and take the baton that he offers us to carry on his mission. The point is, the Holy Spirit manifests for a purpose, not for just no reason. He comes for a reason. And the Holy Spirit and the power that comes from him must be received. And what we see is, this is the expectation of Scripture. This is Jesus' expectation of his disciples and those that follow him and his apostles. That you will receive. It's not like it's an opt-in, opt-out. You know, we have a lot of that in life, don't we? Pick and mix, culture, and all that. Tick box, not tick box. Give it a nine, give it a five. <laughs> it's not like that. Scripture's not like that at all. Jesus is not like that. There's an expectation upon the hero to receive. Because he knows we cannot without him. <clears throat> okay, so we're talking, we're thinking about Holy Spirit to empower disciples in mission, which is us, yeah? It was then, it is now. And we're recognising that we can't unless he is with us and on us to spread the witness of the gospel, etc. Okay, let's have a think about verse 1 and to receive power. So this power is like dunamis, that's the, the Greek word. It's explosive, it's powerful. It's powerful. If you get a chance, if you haven't done it, go home, read the book of Acts. Who's read the book of Acts? Anyone read the book of Acts? Go read the book of Acts, it's just dripping in the outworking of the Holy Spirit and the early church. Absolutely dripping in it. Go soak in it. And don't just really let it grab hold of you. Let it get hold of you, who you are. It's dunamis power. You know, Jesus, if you're not sure about this, we can go back into the Gospels. And uh, Maya read from uh, the baptism of John. Of the River Jordan, okay, and we're going to refer to that. You know, Jesus is our model of the work of the Holy Spirit within us and upon us. He's our model for this, okay? Let's think about this. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Anyone agree? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. By the Spirit working within him came the fruit of good character. He went around doing good, healing all. Sounds about right? Yeah? Later, Jesus, at his water baptism, received the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. Like Maya said, came as a dove to fulfill his mission and mandate. The abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. So what we see, Jesus models us that the Spirit came upon him to bring forth the ministry of power. If you read the Gospels, you'll know the pages are full, aren't they? Yeah, parables, teachings, miracles, miracles, healings. Deliverance, miracles, 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 miracles. They're everywhere in the Gospels. So we, we either park it and say, I'm not sure about that, and ignore it, or we say, what is that saying to me? How does it challenge me? What is God saying? What is God saying? Yeah? <clears throat> and Jesus, as a man, needs the Holy Spirit upon him, to abide upon him, so that he can step into 
his ministry, his mission, which he passes on to his church, yeah? So verse 2, 4 says, they were all filled. So the meaning here, have a look, let's have a look. And being assembled together, now that's number one, let's go to number two. Spirit began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, and we've kind of touched on the languages and the tongues at that point. They were all filled. Okay, what does this mean to be filled? The word here that is being used is an outward filling. It's kind of unusual. There's two, there's actually two fillings in this passage, but we're just looking at this one. The filling is an outward, it's like to be furnished and equipped. That's good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To be furnished and equipped. Because we know we how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this miracle stuff? How do we do that? How do we do it? Yeah? How, how are we going to progress with that? How are we going to go and pray for the sick? Or set people free? How are we going to bring them? You were singing about turning water into wine, beauty for ashes. How are we going to do that, man? Unless we have him with us, yeah? So it's about being furnished. Being filled is about furnished and equipped with the Holy Spirit and coming upon us. So every believer needs the filling of the Spirit, both inwardly on the inside of us for life and outwardly for mission and ministry. And that's all of us. It's not just your paid church staff or your volunteer leaders or what it's like. Every believer, every believer. As far as Jesus is concerned, he pours out the Spirit on all flesh. That's like everyone who's a believer. He's open to all to get a hold of this and allow Holy Spirit to get hold of them. When we become Christians and we're born again, the Holy Spirit was given to us. And Jesus talks about this in John. He talks about it fountain that's within us that springs up. John 4. You can check it out. But in John 7, he talks about the Spirit as rivers of living water that flow out of us. So we've got two pictures. Something on the inside, something coming out of us. And the fullness of the Spirit life, Spirit-filled life, here in John 7, is pushing forward to Acts 2. That's what Jesus is doing. He's shooting forward and pointing to Acts 2 <clears throat> for all believers to receive. <coughs> Our mission <clears throat> is not first and foremost a matter of strategies and plans and projects, as good as they are, and they have their place, but rather of being filled with the Holy Spirit and allowing the divine life within us to burst out of us rivers of living water in word and action. Well, maybe sometimes we don't need to say anything because people kind of see it on us or hear it or kind of get it from just the atmosphere that we carry as we enter a room or a place, yeah? Because we're surrounded and we're so absorbed in Jesus that we go somewhere and someone thinks, what is it about you? You're very different. What's going on? Has anyone had that? Jesus' mission, and now our mission is clear. What is it? What is our mission really about? Let's, let's just ask a question. What do we think? Is it right if I ask a question? Is that right? What do we think our mission is really about? We've kind of sung about it. What does, what does anyone think? Sharing with others. Sharing? With others. Sharing with others, yeah, absolutely. But what are we sharing? The love of Jesus, yeah. Our Savior. Our Savior, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're all they're all correct answers. Absolutely. Anything else? In fact, someone talked about it here. Someone gave a testimony and talked about it. Sorry, I can't quite hear you. 
Salvation mm-hmm. message, yeah, absolutely. Someone, someone came, it might have been that gentleman, did you talk about the goodness of God? Yes. It's all the, all, everything you say is correct, but it's about the goodness of God, that God is good. God is good. God is really good. He really is good. And it's letting people know how good God is. That is our mission. The kindness of the Father being revealed. Jesus came to reveal the Father. It tells us that in Hebrews, doesn't it? The goodness of God. So in the face of everything that people have, their objections, what about this, why this, if God is this, and da, da, da. But he's revealing the goodness of God. It's a tough mission, but it is our mission. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, I think, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do that, Father. I need you to help me do that. In whatever situation I find myself. Mm-hmm. And we find ourselves in all sorts of situations. You know, we run, me and Sue run a healing centre online. We started it in COVID. You know, because we were all in lockdown. We just started praying for people via Zoom. We see people, we've seen lots of healings in people's lives, no exaggeration, all sorts of things. Let me just share this story. A young man, a young lad, about 11 years old, a grandmother contacted me and said, my grandson, so he said, my grandson is in, he was in Southampton General Hospital, and he'd been diagnosed with leukemia and he wasn't expected to live. And um, because we were on Zoom in COVID, we could just zoom in, you know, because the parents were there, they had the phone, we connected on Zoom, so the parents were in the room, the grandmother was in the room, and some of the team zoomed in and spoke and prayed for this young lad. And we didn't know what was going to happen, but the expectation didn't sound good. But as time went on, he started to improve, right? His strength started to return, and he was having treatment, of course, uh, but... This happened on three occasions because grandmother kept sending me these texts. She says, look at this. After so many months, they're constantly monitoring, you know, the blood cells and everything like that that goes with it. And the doctors and consultants are saying, well, we can't seem to find what we should be finding. And they were like that for But the boy was still in the hospital, stayed in the hospital. They lived some miles away. Then they did this again at some point. I got another text from the grandmother, and the consultants were confused. This is what they were reporting back to the parents. We're confused. We're not finding what we should be finding. And this went on for about 11 months. The boy's out of the hospital now. He's well. They couldn't find the leukemia. It's disappeared. So I'm just, I'm just saying, it's the Holy Spirit in us and through us And this is our mission, to reveal the goodness of God and to step in. This is why the Holy Spirit has to be active through believers. Just think think of your world and the people you connect with, whether it's at work or where you travel or whether you travel around the world, your family, wherever you go. If we are alive and on fire for Jesus and allowing him to come through us, just think of the impact that we can have upon people wherever we work and wherever we go and whoever we mix with. Do you see that? That is a... The gospel is such a powerful thing, isn't it? We we had that thing about... Someone else shared a testimony. lady shared a testimony about how he reached down and took me. His glory reached down. It's the lady there, sitting there. What a powerful testimony that is. The goodness of God. Now, we'd be liars if we said every time we see that happen, because we don't. But I believe it because the gospel show it to me. And if I measure the word by my experience, I'm making a mistake. I have to let the word measure me. Do you see that? That's really important. The goodness of God. And the more Christians that are alive and empowered by the Holy Spirit, the more impact we can have upon the millions of people who are yeah? yeah, I mean the math is simple, isn't it? From that point of view. Okay, let's press on quickly. 
So we've got this picture of being filled, yeah? On the inside, but on the outside, Holy Spirit coming upon us. Giving us authority, giving us power to live for God. You know, when as us as individuals get caught by this and receive and just open our hearts to receive, our lives just get changed. It changes us. It comes a cleansing on the inside, a kind of realignment with what God is up to. He gives us the power to live for him, to deal with all the stuff that usually kind of weighs us down or kind of, you know, bowls us over. But more than that, he gives us a love and a passion for him. It starts to burn inside us. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. We have a new boldness in sharing Jesus with others. I mean, does anyone find that hard? <laughs> it can be, can't it? But you know, Holy Spirit can guide you, give you the wisdom, he can put you in the right places so that sometimes you don't need to say it, oh, it's like they come to you. Because they kind of see something about you, they sense something about you, and they start asking you questions. And it just, it's effortless with the Holy Spirit. It's not hard work, it's not like they're striving. So we get a boldness to share Jesus as we step into a spirit-filled life. And the other thing happens, and you probably haven't got time to go back into it, but in chapter 2 here, where Peter explains what's going on, there's, um, it kind of opens up to us the realm of the Holy Spirit. Because he talks about prophecy, visions, and dreams. Your old men shall this, your young men shall do this, yeah? <laughs> there's no exclusions. The Spirit comes on all the flesh, it's open to all of us. That means you, does anyone here have dreams? Does anyone here have pictures or dreams of the Holy Spirit? This lady over here, wonderful, wonderful. Anyone else? Because it is the way of the Holy Spirit to dream and have God speak to you so that you can either pass it on to an individual or somebody else or bring it to your church. Visions, they could be night visions, they could be day visions. You know, you can be sitting and suddenly you kind of just, your eyes are open, your compass mentors. It's not like you're being controlled, but you start to see stuff and you think, wow, you might see that about a person or a situation that you're facing and you kind of see a way through or you see a way through for someone else. Dreams, vision, prophecy, these are, it's the way of the Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, discerning of spirits, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, all these things, they're all in Scripture. And this empowerment comes to the people of God and releases us to carry the goodness of the Father and the kindness of the Father. Jesus' mission, we sung about it. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. This is what Jesus said as he picks up the baton, so to speak. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted in Luke 4, to proclaim liberty to the captives and set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable of the year of the Lord. You know, anyone who wants to call on Jesus can be saved. That happens now, today. It will be happening right now, all around the world. People will be calling on the name of Jesus, and boom, they are being saved. Yeah? That's how real all is, isn't it? Okay. And if you're not sure about what I'm saying, you think, well, I'm not sure about those miracles and all that. Listen, Peter backs it all up by verse 22 because he says, Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, okay? So he's pointing back, looking back. He's speaking. Remember the context. He's speaking to a lot of devout religious people. The Pharisees, all the people that oppose Jesus. They're all in the mix here. He's speaking to everyone and anyone who will listen. And he says, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth. A man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. He says, you saw it. You know this. And this is what's going on now. And this is the birth of the church. He doesn't say that, but that's what's happening. I'm paraphrasing, of course. And he reminds us of Jesus' credibility in this whole area. 
was based upon his miracle ministry. And miracle signs and wonders, if you read the book of Acts, were commonly accepted in the early church. They prayed for miracles, seeing them not as random occasional events, but evidences of God's anointing, glorifying Christ through the church. <coughs> okay, I've probably said enough, but listen, who here today is hungry for more? Is anyone hungry for more? You know? The promise of the Holy Spirit himself is a gift for every believer in every generation. So that includes all of us. Nobody is excluded. And if the children are here, they're not excluded either. There's no junior Holy Spirit. There's only one Holy Spirit. Everybody is included. That's good, yeah? If you want to receive from him. Maybe you're hungry or thirsty for fresh touch, whatever your language is, a fresh breath of God on your life. Maybe you feel powerless and think, how on earth are we going to do that? That's okay. It's all good. <laughs> totally get that. Because we can't do it ourselves. Maybe you think, oh, I, I need some enablement, you know? i got some tough situations going on. I want some of that. You want to live the spiritual life. You're intrigued by the dreams and the visions. And what the Gospels tell us, listen, God is igniting, he's reigniting, that's what he's doing. If anyone wants to receive, I spoke to Alan, I think it's all okay. Some of us will be over here. You're going to have another song or something that could, people could just come up and receive while the worship's going on. So I'm putting him on the spot. <laughs> there's a song and there's some verses afterwards and then it's sort of a blessing and then people can stand in for being praying. Okay, so people can come and receive after all that. If you would like to, want to, uh, it's me and my wife Susan, there's probably other people here that do prayer ministry. I don't know who you all are, but please come and join us and if you want to receive, please do come. Holy Spirit is here. God is at work in people's lives. And any, you know, come for any reason. Holy Spirit is here.